courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD's ATV channel and YouTube channel, VK1 WIA National News, Wireless Weather and Radio Sport is next. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. With all the news that's fit to print, all the news that's fit to hear, I'm Graham VK4, Double B. Let's kick it off with WIA's affiliated clubs coordinator. Hi everyone, this is Angelo, VK2NWT, WIA affiliated clubs coordinator. Over the last few months in this role, I've spent a fair bit of time visiting other amateur radio club websites and Facebook pages in order to gain some ideas about what other clubs do and how they present their club information to the public. While some club websites are pretty basic, simply stating their existence and providing the basic details about their club, others go a fair bit further and explain what amateur radio has to offer to the modern public. Some clubs regularly post pictures and stories about what they've been up to, such as field days, public displays, uh, member projects, club social days, fundraising events, and the list goes on and on. You know, it's easy to think that we've done enough on our on our own club web pages, and if they want more information, well, then they, all they need to do is simply contact us. But then you see something on another club website and think, now that's not a bad idea, or why didn't we try that? So what I'm suggesting is that you take some time out to have a good look at other club websites and all of their links, bookmark their pages, and look them up regularly to see what they've been up to. Like me, I'm sure you'll gain some new ideas and initiatives which you could use to discuss at your own club and possibly take on in the future. You can find the website addresses of the majority of the Australian clubs on their respective WIA website pages. And further to just looking at Australian sites, I've also found it very useful to look up overseas websites, such as those in the US, Canada and the UK. To that end, I've provided some links in this text version of this segment to the listings of the amateur radio clubs in those countries to help you out. Another idea, if you are a Facebook user, is to look up amateur radio club Facebook pages and to join their respective pages so that you'll receive regular postings of what they've been up to. Now, folks, this is where Facebook has it well and truly over static websites because Facebook is a a dynamic medium and will notify you of new postings on those respective Facebook pages once you've started following them. Now I know Facebook may not be everyone's cup of tea and that you may have a view that it's not necessary and it should be avoided at all costs and all that sort of stuff. However, the simple fact is is that Facebook is free, has some great free media tools which you can use to your club's benefit and it is a very powerful medium with which to connect your club with the modern day public. Facebook is used by an increasing number of clubs around the world to fantastic success. Now I found this whole exercise very worthwhile and I've gained some great ideas for my own club website our Facebook page and some of our activities and I would strongly encourage you to do the same. Finally, a reminder to you all to keep that you keep your page details up to date on your WIA website club listing and to ensure that your committee members' details are up to date, including the phone numbers and email addresses. And if you need a hand, you know, with this or with you know, information about club websites and Facebook, then please don't hesitate to contact me via email at VK2NWT at WIA.org.au. Thanks, everyone. Seven threes from Angelo, VK2NWT. Thanks, Angelo. Yes, you've tuned the WIA National News and moving on up this week, let's check in with the operational news bright and early. With Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there. Now, contest-wise, 2022. PL Amateur Radio Group and WIA will be holding its 80-metre slow CW contest Easter Saturday, April 16. The event is the CQ QRS Slow CW Corroboree, a very friendly and supportive get-together for all newcomers and all hands alike, from both WA and other areas, intended to allow everyone to have a go at CW, irrespective of how good or bad your morse is. Participants are encouraged to give it a go, even if you've never used CW before. The contest will involve very simple standard exchanges, which even those could be done using shear sheets if needed. Operating hints for those who haven't used CW before or whose keys are getting a bit rusty are available with the guidelines. It's all about having a bit of fun in a very safe environment. Most participants will be struggling to receive and send, just the same as everyone else. Details are on the PARG website. 
Saturday, April 16, from 1100 hours to 1400 hours Zulu, and is open to everyone. Oh, and there is also a weekly CQ QRS net on Tuesday evenings for everyone from 1700 hours to about 1900 hours, which starts on 3565 kHz and continues with stations calling and responding with slow CW between 3540 and 3570 kHz. Hair Angel Memorial 80 Minute Sprint. Saturday, 7th May, 2022. 10 hours UTC to 11.46 UTC. The Don Edwards Moral Slow Moors Contest, two days starting May 14, 1800 hours, concluding May 15, 1600 hours. International CQ Pride Contest, June 4-6. New Worldwide Digital Contest, also June 4-6. VK Shires Contest, 11 June 2022. WIA VHF UHF Field Days Winter 2022. 0200 hours UTC Saturday 25 June through 0159 hours UTC Sunday 26 June. Dippers and BK6. DX Window. NASA on the air. NOTA. Special Event Stations. There is an amateur radio club established at many NASA field centres across the USA. These club members are made up of civil servants, contractor personnel, retirees, and recognised community members. Some clubs are large and well supported, some are small and struggle. But they have a common goal to show their support to NASA and space fans everywhere by highlighting the history of some amazing accomplishments. The first NASA on the Air, NOTA, special event of the year will be held Saturday, April 23 through until Wednesday, April 27, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 16 mission to the Moon. Different NASA radio clubs will go on the air at different times to make two-way contacts with fellow space-enthusiastic ham radio operators. Now don't forget to listen out for and work VK90 ABC, our IC station celebrating 90 years of the national broadcaster, which is operating all year. BBC Centenary Special Event, GB100 BBC. Members of the BBC's radio club, the London BBC Radio Group, have been operating their all-year special event call sign to help celebrate the BBC Centenary Year. GB100 BBC from the headquarters station in Broadcasting House, London. And finally, one station you have ages to find and work is HG200PS. This is marking the 200th birthday of Sander Patafi, a revolutionary and celebrated poet, and will be on the air until March 15, 2023. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix, VK4FUQ in Ingham. This is VK1WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions, www.wia.org.au. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. World Amateur Radio Day. Monday, 18th of April, is World Amateur Radio Day. It's also a public holiday ending the Easter weekend here in VK, Easter Monday. It was on the 18th of April, 1925, that the International Amateur Radio Union was founded during the International Radio Telegraph Conference in Paris. Amateur radio experimenters were the first to discover that the shortwave spectrum, far from being a wasteland, could support worldwide propagation. In the rush to use the shorter wavelengths, amateur radio was in grave danger of being pushed aside, the IARU's history has noted. Amateur radio pioneers meeting in Paris created the IARU to support amateur radio worldwide. Then, just two years later, at the International Radio Telegraph Conference, amateur radio gained the allocations still recognised today, 160, 80, 40, 20 and 10 metres. Since its founding, the IARU has worked tirelessly to defend and expand the frequency allocations for amateur radio thanks to the support of enlightened administrations in every part of the globe. 
Radio amateurs are now able to experiment and communicate in frequency bands strategically located throughout the radio spectrum. From the 25 countries that formed the IARU in 1925, the IARU has grown to include 160 member societies in three regions. IARU Region 1 includes Europe, Africa, the Middle East and Northern Asia. Region 2 covers the Americas. Region 3 is comprised of Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific Island nations and most of Asia. The International Telecommunication Union has recognised the IARU as representing the interests of amateur radio. Today, amateur radio is more popular than ever with more than 3 million, that's 3 million licensed operators. And that's why we radio amateurs worldwide celebrate April 18th with special activities every year. As an example, the South African Radio League will be issuing a WARD certificate to radio amateurs who make QSOs on the 18th of April 2022 and submit a log sheet. Zulu Tango for Tango will also be active on the 18th of April on 7.100 and 3.700 MHz. Rob Schenk November 2, Oscar Oscar, President in DEXA, has announced their Humanitarian Aid Fund. The Zorro, Mayazawa, Juliet Hotel 1, Alpha Juliet Tango, Hams with Hearts Fund. In DEXA, now has a new epitaph for their Humanitarian Aid Fund. The addition will be the Zorro, Mayazawa, JH1 AJT, Hams with Hearts Fund, in honour of its founder who recently became a silent key. Before his death in March of 2022, Mr. Zorro Mayazawa, Juliet Hotel 1 Alpha Juliet Tango, established and endowed the Indexa Humanitarian Aid Fund, which specifically supports humanitarian aid projects carried out by D-Expeditions. His generosity enabled Indexa to begin these grants in January of 2016. In news from Region 1, There have recently been a number of reports of individual holders of UK amateur licences in Region 1 gaining innovation and trial licences from Ofcom to conduct experimental transmissions on 40 MHz, the 8 metre band. Ofcom has made it very clear for several years that there was no likelihood of UK radio amateurs gaining any access to 40 MHz, which included NOV, Notice of Variation, to a UK amateur licence, or an amateur SRP, Special Research Permit. The RSGB has consulted Ofcom as to the exact status of these innovation and trial licences. Ofcom's reply in part was as follows. We've been approached by a couple of individuals wanting to conduct experiments in the band. Like all other research and innovation requests Ofcom receives, we've put these through our innovation and trial licensing regime. If the coordination checks are passed, they're being issued with an innovation and trial licence. These are issued for up to 12 months on a non-interference, no protection and non-operational basis. These are not amateur radio special research permits and licensees do not fall under the amateur radio licence terms and conditions. Therefore, applicants are not required to have passed an amateur exam or hold a call sign. Although we at Ofcom are allowing this experimentation, we would like to make it clear we have no proposals to allow wider amateur radio access to the 40 MHz band. France takes action against radio amateur. The Court of Versailles has sentenced a 65-year-old resident of La Falaise to a one-year suspended prison sentence. He was a radio amateur and had transmitted insulting, threatening and homophobic remarks. A translation of the Ouai France story reads, This radio amateur has been targeted by several complaints from all over France for remarks he made on air, it's been reported. For several months, the defendant had made insulting remarks, including homophobic, explains the news site. The sexagenarian had also announced the false death of a man on Facebook. People who knew me had even called the town hall where I lived to find out where my funeral was, the victim told our colleagues. The man, who had not taken care to hide his call sign, had been easily identified. He had been arrested for the first time by the gendarme in December 2020, says the local media. His broadcast material, which was not declared, had been seized. 
He was arrested again on January 7 for non-compliance of his judicial control after having bought equipment. The defendant was finally sentenced to one year in prison with a probationary suspension of two years. He was also sentenced to the prohibition to exercise the activity of amateur radio as well as pay a fine of €5,000. Belgium's UBA has joined other national amateur radio societies in banning amateurs from Russia and Belarus from contests. With regard to participation in activities of a competitive nature, contests, ARDF competitions, obtaining awards, etc., the Board of Directors of the UBA has decided that the UBA will support the measures of various IAU sister associations and regular sports organisations. This means that, until further notice, broadcasting and listening amateurs from the Russian Federation and Belarus are excluded from participation. For Belgian participants in various competitions organised by the UBA, this means that connections with stations in those countries yield zero points, and they cannot be used as multipliers either. In news from Region 2, from the Space Weather Prediction Centre of the USA's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, New sunspot counts from NOAA confirm that the solar cycle 25 is racing ahead of the official forecast and the gap is growing. Sunspot counts have now exceeded predictions for 18 straight months. The monthly value at the end of March was more than twice the forecast and the highest in nearly seven years. Federal Communications Commission staff in the USA have clarified in response to an ARRL request that the new $35 application fee will not apply to most license modifications, including those to upgrade an amateur radio licensee's operator class and changes to club station trustees. The FCC staff explained that the new fees will only apply to applications for a new license, renewal, rule waiver, etc. And wrapping up international news from Region 3 from Calcutta, India. Millennium Post are reporting that the son of a retired customs officer who had gone missing during the family's visit to Kanyakumari in December last year has been traced by ham radio operators. The father of the victim left for Chennai by flight on Friday night last to bring his son back home. We'd searched for our missing son for some days after cancellation of our return ticket to Kolkata, but our efforts proved futile. A few days ago, I learnt about Ambarish Nagbiswas, the secretary and custodian of West Bengal Radio Club, an organisation of ham radio enthusiasts that has expertise in tracing missing persons, said Berman. Nagbiswas asked for a photograph of Sandeep and circulated it amongst his counterparts in Chennai. On Friday morning, he was located while begging for arms. His father identified him to be his son. Considering the age of the father, one of our hams has accompanied the elderly father to bring back his son safely to their residence, Nagbiswas said. For VK1WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia. Through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, VK3 Triple F. And a very good day to you. Worldwide special interest group news and summits on the air, worldwide flora fauna program, parks on the air, and other adventure groups. SOTA's 20th anniversary. Summits on the Air was launched in England and Wales March 2nd, 2002. Since then, it has expanded massively to over 100 associations on all major world continents and has over 24,000 participants. A special award has been launched to celebrate SOTA's 20th birthday. Participants can obtain a certificate for their best 20 days chasing or activating separate certificates for each activity. Logs are entered as normal and the SOTA database picks your 20 highest scoring days out of your logs for the whole year, March 2nd, 2022 to March 1st, 2023. 
from mountain tops to the water's edge. We'll have another anniversary shortly. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, CW. There are many different types of Morse key available, old and new. One of the most interesting and iconic is a key that is commonly known as the bathtub key. This Morse key was used in World War II British bomber aircraft. It was sealed and this enabled it to be used in some early open cockpit aircraft. But it was most widely used in the heavy bombers like the famous Avro Lancaster and several others. The sealed nature of the key was important because it was felt that the sparks from the key contacts could cause an explosion in the presence of the fumes of aviation fuel that might have been present in these aircraft. Find out more about this interesting key in the YouTube video. The link is of course in this week's text edition of WIA National News. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Digital Everything you need to know about LoRa, that's L-O-R-A. LoRa is a digital mode that is used in the 70 centimetre band for point-to-point links, high-altitude balloon telemetry and images, as well as for amateur satellite communications. A recent talk on LoRa 1, given by Johan Stocking, is now available on YouTube, and Damon Tilly, G4USI, has written two magazine articles about LoRa, which are available on the web. Now, with more digital news, VK2WAY, Jared Quinn. Digital voice fans, the free DMR network is back in VK land with a brand new master server hosted in a Sydney cloud data center and managed by VK2WAY. Free DMR is a global DMR network of amateur radio users around the world and since its inception in November 2020 has grown to a network of over 60 open bridge servers, 700 talk groups and over 5,000 regular users. Free DMR promises freedom for repeater, gateway keepers and even some hotspots to have full control instead of being told what has to go where and when or what links to what. Free DMR offers features over other DMR networks, including client configurations via protocol options line, dialer talk group, automated repeater at voice idents, and multi-mode reflexes, fre- reflectors and bridges, including YSF, D-Star, All-Star, Echo Link, and Peanut. Hotspots are welcome to connect anytime by finding Free DMR Australia in the Pi Star DMR network list or following the instructions on the Free DMR website. Repeater and open bridge connections are welcome, and inquiries can be made directly to VK2WAY or via the Free DMR Australia Facebook page or the Contact Free DMR link on the Free DMR UK website, where you can also find more information at HTTP Free DMR. UK. This is VK2WAY for the Free DMR Network. Thanks, Jared. Now to Islands on the Air. OC032, New Caledonia Island. Jean-Louis F5NHJ is paying his family a visit from April 5th until June 7th and operates as FK f5 nhj qrv holiday style on 160 to 6 meters focusing on ritty and ft8 4 with a ground plane antenna qsl via club log or low tw worldwide special interest groups illw illw.net ILLW turns 25. This year, 2022, sees the 25th anniversary of the International Lighthouse Lightship Weekend. 23 years ago, two members of the RARC in Scotland started the Northern Lights Award, which quickly morphed into the International Lighthouse Lightship Weekend in 1998. Since then, it has grown and become a must-do event on the amateur radio calendar. Its success may be due to the fact that it has few rules, is free, and is not a contest but a fun weekend. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Yota, Youth on the Air. Now, Alec, VK2 APC. Thank you, Bruce. The annual school club EU Day Activity on May 5th is worth all of us taking part in, particularly we youngsters. It's designed to make contacts with and among school amateur radio clubs, training stations and school kids with their own call signs, as well as contacts with stations from all over Europe and even the world. 
This activity sounds like a great way to get young operators on the air from their school shacks using their training call signs or the school club's call sign for irrelevant messages only, according to the national law. Very often, a new operator would be intimidated by the fear of not knowing what to say to the stranger on the other side of the radio. This exchange of information helps to overcome fear in a low-pressure contest format. It should not be made into a 5-9 contest, though. Operators are encouraged to take more time to chat beyond the exchange of necessary details. For VK1 WIA National News, I am Alec, VK2 APC in Sydney. Now back over to you, Bruce. Thanks, Alec. Now, Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Rescue Radio. The Peel Amateur Radio Group in Western Australia is holding Exercise Cloudless Dawn 1, involving Mandra local emergency organisations, including the police, SES, hospital and bushfire brigade, and will simulate a complete statewide failure of the internet after a cyber attack. The exercise will run from 9.45 until 1300 Western Australian time. And you can check out their What's New page of the PARG website. A major search to try and trace two hunters missing in the Rowallan Forest near Lake Oroko, New Zealand, started last Sunday. A ground search was done until last light on the Sunday, followed by an aerial search using thermal and night vision technology and involves search and rescue personnel, Lansar, Arak, the amateur radio emergency communications personnel, and search dogs. Some three days later, the two missing hunters were found walking out of the bush, and police say they were being flown to Southland Hospital to be assessed as a precaution. Police said the pair were ill-equipped for a night out in the bush. I'm Bruce. VK3 Triple F in sunny Bendigo. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions www.wia.org.au. 2022 social scene. VK5, the South Coast Amateur Radio Club's buy and sell, happens Sunday the 24th of April. That's the day before Anzac Day. In VK2, Oxley Region Amateur Radio Club's Field Day, June 11 and 12. Back to VK5, the Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Surg Convention. Mount Gambier, the Queen's Birthday Weekend in June. VK6, it's Perth Tech, October 21 to 23. Then in May, three big ones looming. VK3, it's the Moorabbin Ham Fest, 10am, May 14. Right across VK, it's the WIA AGM, the virtual event, May 7. And VK2, it's Mayhem at Wyong Racecourse, 8.30am, May 1. Hi, Ed. What are you up to, mate? Hey, Glenn. I'm off to me, I'm lad. It's the largest event for amateurs in Australia now. Hmm. Well, to start, you know, it ain't that far from Wyong Station. Them marquees are air-conditioned and packed full of traders with exhibitors all around the venue. There's trash and treasure in the car boot sale, and that's 50 or more cars undercover. Hey, didn't your mate want to get his ticket? You can get the Australian or the US licence at the Mayhem, and there's a raffle with great prizes, and tickets are only $5. Tea and coffees on three levels. On top, it's even free. I know you're not a fan of tea and coffee, so we can always meet up at the bistro and grab a bite on the go. What do you think? Crikey. And all that's under one roof? Yeah, that's why they had to use Wyang Racecourse. Need to be big enough to hold it all. Let's go and check it out. We can have a beer and get in some radio cheer. Don't miss out. Will you be at Wyong Racecourse on Sunday the 1st of May for Mayhem? <laughs> and thanks, Glenn and Ed, for, shall we say, popping in. OK, just as we leave you, submitting news items. And remember this, the sooner you submit material, the more the likelihood of it being broadcast in the very next edition of WIA National News. Each recorded item will only be broadcast once. If you want a couple of mentions, please submit different slants to keep your event fresh and always, if the newsroom is to read your event, write it in the third person. A reminder that when supplying HamFest info, we obviously can't plug deals from commercial traders on air, but we at the WIA will put your supporters' goods in this text edition, no worries. But no will not give blatant plugs to raffles, be it raffles at the event, online 
or in any VK state. And with that, I'm Graham VK for BB Walk Softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.